This is a Friday Shoes production. Lesson 6-1 on our books on page 306. Target is I can identify special pairs of angles and relationships of angles formed by two parallel lines cut by a transversal. That's a mouthful. Getting into our basic unit on measurement of angles and lines and their relationships together. In previous courses, you have learned that pairs of angles can be classified by the relationship to each other. Let's look at vertical angles, complementary angles, and supplementary angles. Take a look at this picture I have over here where I have two lines crossing. Notice angle one and angle two. Those are called vertical angles. They're opposite of each other, and they have the same measurement. Vertical angles are congruent, meaning they have the same measurement. Congruent is the equal sign or equals in geometry. How about three and four? Well, guess what? Those are called vertical angles as well, and they are the same value of measurement, whatever it may be. So the big thing is, remember, vertical angles are created when you intersect two lines, and they are congruent. All right, complementary angles. The sum of the measures of complementary angles is 90 degrees. And here's what like I say. Two angles adding up to 90 degrees are called complementary angles. They do not have to be touching, but in this case, if you take a look at the picture, they are touching. Notice we have a 50 and a 40. 50 degrees and 40 degrees, add those together is 90 degrees. So those two angles, angle ABD and angle DBC, are complementary angles. Again, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Just to show you that they don't have to be touching, take a look at what supplementary angles are. The sum of the measures of supplementary angles is 180 degrees. If you take a look at that picture down here, notice those two are not touching, but when you put them together, they'll create a straight line, and 125 plus 55 is 180 degrees. Supplementary angles are two angles that, when you put them together, add the degrees, you'll get 180 degrees. So angles C and D are supplementary angles. So there's vertical angles, complementary angles, and supplementary angles. Well, you can use the relationships between pairs of angles to find missing measures. Recall that angles can be named by three points. Notice over here on the right, we've got this simple picture here. And we've got actually three angles there. We've got angle ABD, we have angle DBC, and we also have angle ABC. Well, what are they asking us to do here? It says in the figure, Measure the, the measure of angle ABC, and that's how you read that. The measure of angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees. And you can see that little tick uh, L mark there to show 90 degrees. It says find the value of X. Well, if we know that angle ABC, the entire angle ABC, is 90 degrees, we have 65 already, and we're looking for how much is left over for that other angle. So notice the measure of angle ABD plus the measure of angle DBC is equal to 90 degrees. So we'll take our X that we don't know plus our 65 we do know and it has to equal 90 degrees total. Of course we subtract 65 from both sides in this simple algebra problem and we have X is equal to 25. So the measure of angle ABD is 25 degrees. 25 plus 65 is 90. All right, how about this one? Find the value of x in this figure. Well, I'm just looking at the figure right now going, I see something here. I see that there's two lines crossing. We've got this line crossing with this line right here. Well, let's read through. It says angles GBD, GBD, and that would be G, B, D, and F, B, E, I'll do that one in blue, F, B, E, are vertical angles, and thus are congruent. Notice the two lines crossing in black actually do create vertical angles. So I've got vertical angles meaning 150 degrees here, and I also, then I have 150 degrees here, but it's not written as 150, it's written as 95 and some other stuff left over to get to 150. So we need to find x there. Let's set up our simple formula. And that is measure of angle GBD is equal to measure of angle FBE. Let's take our 95 plus x, and that's got to be equal to 150 total because the vertical angles uh, are equal. 
So we subtract our 95 and we get 55 degrees. So X is going to be 55 degrees. All right, how about you try these three? Stop the video. Come on back, see how you do. All right, find the value of X in each figure. How about A here? Well, I notice that we have supplementary angles, meaning we have two angles when they add together create 180 degrees. So I have a, an angle called X degrees and I have an angle called 38 degrees and they both have to add up to 180 degrees since they're supplementary. So of course I will subtract 38 from both sides and X will be 100. And let's see here, I gotta borrow, let's see, we got that 142. So we have 142 degrees. How about B here? Oh, this is easy. Take a look. We got two lines crossing. Well, those are vertical. That means if this angle is 150 degrees, it's opposite across is gonna be 150 degrees. So not a lot of math to do there other than just saying, yeah, they're vertical, therefore X is equal to 150 degrees. All right, how about C? Take a look at this one. Well, I, here's what I'm noticing. I've got a line going like this, and I also have a line going like this. Okay, and that creates vertical angles. I've got 110 degree angle here, and I also have a 110 de degree angle here, but it's not written that way, but it's gonna help us get to X. This, these two add up to 110 degrees. So let's take that, X plus 75, and it has to equal 110. Let's subtract out the 75 from both sides, and what do we end up with? That's gonna be 35. X is left over on the left, so we have 35 degrees for that value of X. All right, if the two lines cut by a transversal are parallel, then these special pairs of angles are congruent. Wait a minute, transversal, what is that? Transversal. Hey, take a look down here at this picture and I'll show you what a transversal is. First of all, you've got two lines that are parallel. How do we know they're parallel? Because of these two little arrows. That, that tells you that the two lines are parallel. So those two lines are parallel and then you got this other line cutting through. This one right here. So this, this line right here, guess what? That's what we call a transversal. A transversal cuts through other lines. So there's your simple definition. All right, let me get rid of that. And let's talk about alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and corresponding angles. All right, alternate interior angles. I guess the way to talk about interior and exterior, I, I should just have you make sure you draw one of these in your notes two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And let me, let me explain here. The, the space between the two parallel lines is called the interior. So we call this the interior. I'm abbreviating there. And the stuff on the outside of the parallel lines, you guessed it, is called the exterior. This is the exterior. It's on the outside of the parallel lines. With that said, let's talk about what alternate interior angles are. Alternate interior angles are interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So notice four and six are called alternate interior angles because they're on the interior and they alternate, meaning they're on opposite sides of each other. Same with three and five. Three and five are called alternate exterior, alternate interior angles because they, again, are on the inside or interior and they alternate. They're on one side and the other one's on the other side of the transversal. So those are called alternate interior angles. Now how about alternate exterior angles? The second thing on the right here. Alternate exterior angles are exterior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal. So take a look at angle one and angle seven. Angle one and angle seven are called alternate exterior angles because they're on alternating sides of the transversal, meaning opposite sides of the transversal, and 
They are on the exterior of the angle uh, of the parallel lines. And of course, two and eight would be another pair of alternate exterior angles. Now, the cool thing about alternate interior angles and alternate exterior angles, a pair of alternate interior angles have the same measure, and that they're called congruent. That's what you see, that little congruence here. Notice that? Same thing on alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles have the same measure. They're congruent. All right, let's talk about corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are those angles that are in the same position on the two lines in relation to the transversal. I like their example here. You've got angle 1 and angle 5. Notice this transversal cuts right through, right? And it makes two sets of angles that are the same. Take a look. Angle 1 and angle 5 are the same value. They're congruent. Same with angle 3 and angle 7. Those are going to be the same measure. If you had a protracting measure, they're going to be the same. And same with number angle 2 and angle 6. These are called, again, corresponding angles. And our last pair would be 4 and 8. Those are corresponding angles. Notice they are all congruent. So angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent. 3 and 7 are congruent. 2 and 6 are congruent. And 4 and 8 are congruent. Here's the real cool thing about alternate, or excuse me, angles when created uh, through a transversal cutting through parallel lines. If I could use this up here, if I were to tell you that this right here was 70 degrees, that you know, because this is a straight line right here, that this is going to be 110 degrees, because a straight line will have 180 degrees total. Well, once you know those two, well, guess what? Now you know everything. Angle 3 is going to be 70 degrees. Angle 4 is going to be 110 degrees. Angle, let's see here, because 4 and 6 are the same. This is going to be 110 degrees, angle 6, right here. And then, of course, this is going to be 70 degrees in between these two lines. And then this right here is going to be 110 degrees because these are vertical. And then this is going to be 70 degrees right here. So notice, when you do cut parallel lines with a transversal, you create four angles, but only two different measures. The only time you'll have one measure is if you actually cut it straight up and down at a 90-degree angle. Uh, everything will be 90 degrees. All right, let's take a look at the real-world problem here. Finding angle measure. It says a furniture designer built the bookcase shown on the right there. Line A is parallel to line B. Classify the relationship between angle 2 and angle 4. Then if measure of angle 1 is equal to 95 degrees. So we're saying if this right here, measure of angle 1 is 95 degrees, what do they want to know now? Find the measure of angle 2. Right, so we're looking for the measure of angle 2. I don't know what that is. And we're also looking for the measure of angle 4. So we're looking for the measure of angle 4. I'll use those as our guides. All right. Well, first off, since angle 2, they want us to uh, classify ang angle 2 and angle 4. Since angle 2 and angle 4 are interior angles that lie on opposite sides of the transversal, they're called alternate interior angles. That's how you classify. You would just say the name of what they are. Those are called alternate interior angles, angle 2 and angle 4. Since angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, take a look at this. Angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. The sum of their measures is 180 degrees. Well, we already have angle 1. That's 95 degrees. Therefore, to find measure of angle 2, which we are looking for, you take 180 and subtract 95. That's 85 degrees. So... This shall be 85 degrees. 85 plus the 95 equal 180 degrees. All right. Since angle 2 and angle 4 are alternate, uh, alternate interior angles, they are congruent. So take a look. What they're saying is, is hey, angle 2 and angle 4 here, these two angles, angle 2, angle 4. You should do that in green. They're alternate interior angles. They're congruent. So therefore... Since 2 is 85 degrees, 4 has got to be 85 degrees. There you go. 
All right. Last piece. You figure these out right here. These four. Come on back. See how you do. First off, it says classify the relationship between angle six and angle seven using the picture, of course, to the left. You figure to the left. Well, angle six and angle seven. If you look at them, angle six and angle seven, those are in corresponding spots. They're like in the same spots, one on the left, one on the right, in the same location. So they're called corresponding angles. How about classifying the relationship between angle three and angle eight? Angle three, angle eight. Well, they're on alternate sides and they're on the exterior of the two parallel lines. So they're called alternate exterior angles. All right, how about the measure of angle one equaling, if the measure of angle one is 63 degrees, find the measure of angle seven. Okay, let's start from scratch here. So if, if this is, if one is 63 degrees, so this spot from here to here is 63 degrees, find the measure of angle seven. Well, guess what? Those are alternate exterior angles. So they're, I know they're congruent. So the measure of angle seven, the measure of angle seven is gonna be 63 degrees. If measure of angle one is 63 degrees. Well, now that we know that, what's the measure of angle four? Well, we know that this creates 180 degrees. From here to here, that's 180 degrees. We already have 63 degrees from here to here. Well, how much do we need left? To make up to 180, well, take 180 and subtract off 63. And that'll be 117 degrees. So the measure of angle four, this is how you would state it, is 117 degrees. All right, how about that last one? If measure of angle eight is 122 degrees, find the measure of angle six and measure of angle one. All right, let's clear these off to start that last one. So the measure of angle eight is 122 degrees. That's from here to here. All right. Now what? Find the measure of angle six. Huh. Measure of angle six. I don't know. I do know this though. I do know that the measure of angle five is 122 degrees because five and eight are corresponding angles and those are congruent now i just need the remaining amount to get to 180 because this entire five and six create 180 degrees so let's take our 180 degrees and subtract 122 and that gives us 58 degrees so the measure of angle six is equal to 58 degrees what about the measure of angle one? That's easy. If this is 58 degrees, which we just calculated, six and one are vertical. See, these are vertical angles here. So this is 58 degrees as well, because vertical angles are congruent. Ooh, that's a one, 58 degrees. And that is all. Don't forget, you can always rewatch this video or read the examples in the book and or watch the personal tutor videos on the online textbook. And this has been a wonderful Friday Shoes production.